What's going on, everybody? You're listening to another episode of Unplugged. I'm your host, Jacob Puckett, and today we're doing something a little bit different than normal. Normally, I have folks in the studio where we've got our mics set up and we're talking to each other face to face, but with everything going on and to stay safe and to stay six feet apart, um, we're actually going to be recording across town from each other today remotely. Um, our guest is Jason Lingle. Jason's been on the podcast before. He is our director of energy solutions, and he actually had one of the most popular podcasts so far when he's talking about energy efficiency tips back in the winter. So I thought it might be useful right now with a lot of people trying to save money and find ways to cut costs and have some savings to bring him back on and ahead of the hot weather, ahead of the heat waves, talk about ways to weatherize your home and save money during the summer heat. Jason, what do you have for us, man? Well, thanks, Jacob. Thanks for having me back. Um, I, I have a theory as to why I have the most listened to podcast uh, episode. I think it's because I sent it to all my family, and so I had a bunch of people, uh, on members listen to it. Uh, but anyway, it's good to be here. Happy to provide some uh, information to you and to the membership on uh, ways to save um, dollars and save money and save electricity during the summer. So, you know, if I can just kind of look at utility bills from, you know, a yearly perspective, typically what you see, um, you know, right now we're recording this podcast in May. Um, so typically what you see are the peaks uh, for the mem- with electric bills and electric usage kind of in January, February, and potentially March, depending on how bad the winter is. And, uh, and usually April and May, March, April, and May tend to be kind of like shoulder months. The utility bills are a little lower than normal. And then they do kind of, as you mentioned, they do start to climb uh, June, July, August, um, into September when uh, you know, heating, or excuse me, cooling costs uh, are a big impact on the bill, and um, that's really what you know we kind of dis- uh, discussed talking about today. Are just things that can be done to kind of help uh, ease uh, low, keep those electric bills during the summertime just as low as possible. So I wanted to run through some of those here with you. So the first thing during again during the summer, kind of the biggest expense that you're going to have. Um, is going to be based on, you know, your cooling, based on air conditioning. And, uh, you know, lots of different homes in our service territory, they uh, use different methods for cooling. You know, I lived in Boone and lived in the mountains, and we didn't didn't use air conditioning, but, you know, maybe a month or maybe six weeks out of the whole summer, whereas some of the homes down in uh, Caldwell County use air conditioning five or six months out of the, out of the year. So... Different folks are going to you know, have different pieces of information uh, on how to reduce their cooling bills. But if you have a central air conditioning system, so you know if this is a heat pump or just a standalone electric AC system, you know the, the best thing you can do is to sign up to have some type of service done to it, whether it be annually or twice a year. Be sure it's clean. Be sure you're cleaning your filters. Uh, be sure that it's operating as optimally and as efficiently as possible. That's going to be the first step. Aside from that, so usually uh, if you, like the thermostat is going to have an automatic or just an on setting. But the on setting is going to use more electricity, and it's actually going to decrease the ability for it to remove moisture in the home. So if you put that on auto, Better off there. And lastly, uh, you can set your thermostat to 78 degrees. Uh, I know, you know, a lot of people, 72 degrees, 70 degrees, that might be where they like to keep it at, which is fine if you're at the level. Uh, if you're more comfortable at 70 or 72 degrees, that's certainly your prerogative there. But uh, if you keep it at 78 degrees, then you're not going to be running, or running your AC quite as much. And I was gonna, I was gonna jump in real quick and ask. You know, a lot of people 
wonder just how much money or like maybe just how much of their energy they can save by going up a certain amount of degrees. Is there a specific percentage or amount that people could expect to save energy wise uh, if they raise their thermostats up a couple degrees in the summertime? Yeah, so kind of the general rule of thumb is uh, kind of a one degree change in your thermostat could affect the bill like three to five percent. So, you know, if you normally have it set at, you know, 72 degrees and you bumped it up to 78 degrees, I mean, it's a six degree difference. So you could, you know, theoretically, your cooling load, you know, anywhere from Eighteen uh, percent to to thirty percent under that scenario could have some significant savings there. And, um, and I know we've talked about central AC systems, and that's pro- that's a huge part of it for a lot of people because that is something that's pulling a lot of energy, especially in the summertime on those hot days. What are some ways to really stretch out that dollar a little bit when you have a window AC unit? Yeah, that's a good question, Jacob. So, the, like you mentioned, window unit ACs are still used a lot. Uh, you know, they're not as efficient as kind of a central AC system. Um, what you want to do with those, again, clean any filters. So, if there's any filters on those, clean those. If they're you know inside, sitting in your window frame, you want to make sure that that seal is as tight as you can get. It. So, you know, the air that you're cooling inside is not leaking right back to the outside. So, you know, make sure that the weather stripping is good. Make sure that the um, kind of the window uh, slides to fill in space are, are as tight as possible. And then also a lot of the air conditioners have like a fresh air vent. And you just want to be sure that that flows again because you don't want to lose that cool air. And kind of the next step up, I was going to mention this, it's kind of a, it's a, it's a, it's not a window unit AC, but if you did want an AC to cool just a small area, like a garage or a living room, and didn't want to invest, you know, the several thousands of dollars for a central AC system, you could buy a mini split. Uh, this is a, this is a, a combination heat pump and AC, or it's a, it's a heat pump, ductless heat pump that has AC and heat capability, but uh, it can cool very efficiently. Um, it's a little bit more expensive or quite a bit more expensive than a window unit AC, but not as expensive as a central AC system. And then, you know, one other thing, just to kind of throw out another way to kind of to cool their homes, um, especially in the mountains, are with ceiling fans. You know, there's still a lot of homes out there just with ceiling fans. And, you know, just uh, just throw this out, out there, you know, ceiling fans are not meant to cool rooms. They only cool people. So you don't want to have a ceiling fan running all the time, especially if the house or the room is not in use. So if you're sitting in your living room and you've got a ceiling fan, or if you're in your bedroom getting ready to go to bed, you've got the ceiling fan on, you know, it's cooling you, it's serving its purpose. Um, but when you leave, you know, be sure you turn that off because that's, that's a waste of electricity uh, if it just continues to run. And then also something else you can do with that ceiling fan, it kind of helps during the summer and the winter, is you can reverse the flow of it. So if you have it going uh, like clockwise in the winter, which kind of helps circulate the heat, if you have it running counterclockwise, that air is blowing straight down on you and creating the breeze. Um, so that's a little, the little setting that's on all ceiling fans. You just have to flip a switch to reverse the flow, and that'll help with air circulation and direct that uh, layer back down on you a little easier. And Jason, I think we hear a lot about weatherization projects in the winter time. I know when we talk about colder weather moving in, a lot of people talk about um, you know sealing duct work or making sure everything's airtight, but also making sure there's insulation in your attic and crawl space and uh, plenty in the walls. Are those things we should be worried about in the summertime too? Oh yeah, definitely. That's a, that's a good point to bring up there, Jacob. You know, if you think about your house. Uh, You're trying to keep that envelope as tight as possible as far as, uh, you know, your building envelope. So you want to decrease the airflow, you know, whether it's super hot outside or whether it's super cold outside. You want to decrease that airflow in and out of your house because, you know, the dollars that you're spending on your electric bill or for, for your energy bill, you're spending that money to condition the air inside your home. 
and you don't want that to go to the outside. So all of those things you brought up, adding insulation to the attic or the crawl space, even to, you know, even to the walls if possible. Those are really good projects you can do. Um, you know, something very simple as like gaskets that you can put behind outlets and uh, light switches, wall switches. Those are really easy to kind of install. They'll, they'll decrease that airflow. Caulking around windows and door frames is great. Um, you know, plumbing penetrations that come from the walls beneath your bathrooms and beneath your kitchen sinks. Also, the uh, simple that helps during the winter and the summer is just is to have to do with your shades and your drapes on the windows. So, you know, during the summer, you want to close those shades and drapes during the day. That's going to help keep the sun and the sun's heat outside. And uh, you can open them back up at night, obviously. But um, that'll, that'll that'll keep the heat uh, outside of the house is a little bit more. And um, also a fireplace damper. You know, if, if you run a fireplace, a burning fireplace or a, a vented gas logs during the winter time, you want to be sure your fireplace damp closed because uh, you don't want that cold AC to go outside. And then we just missed you know, we just missed Arbor Day. Uh, we're about a month away from it from April, but uh, something else that, that you could do um, is plant trees outside. You know, the tall, maturing, distinguished trees that can provide shade. You know, properly placed trees actually can reduce electric bills as well as well because they're keeping that sun from hitting the house. Yeah, and there's actually. I can't remember the exact link off the top of my head right now, so I'm kicking myself. But there's actually on our website, if we go to the resources section or the resources tab at the top of BlueRidgeEnergy.com, you can actually find a resource guide of trees that are reasonably sized that you know won't interfere with right away areas or won't interfere with power lines or anything like that. You know that require pretty minimal, minimal upkeep and pruning over time. That are great for shading your house and accenting your properties, landscaping. Uh, so definitely be sure you go on there and check that out because Jason's on something there with the trees because. I mean, it's just it's simple to think about. You know, if you can shade your house more and there's less sunlight on it, you're obviously going to stay cooler, um, or the house is going to have an easier job staying cooler. So that's I always think those those little things that people ask about. There's there's bigger things like weatherization, but I don't think people realize what are the little things they can do to keep their house operating more efficiently. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I, I think some little tagline out there about planting trees to reduce electricity costs says something like, you know, it's a low tech. It's a low-tech uh, answer to a high-tech problem or something like that. And it's just like you said, it's, it's one of those things that you may not think about that you could, you could potentially do to decrease your uh, cooling bills during the summer. And Jason, I know that we've kind of been spared so far with spring being a little bit cooler. And that kind of brings me back to Beat the Peak. Tell people about, if, you, if they haven't heard about Beat the Peak and over the last couple of years from us, what should they know about Beat the Peak? What is it? Um, how do they become a part of it? Beat the Peak is something, it's a, it's a really neat program that we started, like you said, a couple of years ago. I think this will be the third summer, um, the third year that we've kind of been promoting it and trying to get folks involved with it. But, um, you know, the, the whole, the, the hour cost for all Blue Ridge members, a large portion of it has to deal with costs during the summer on those really hot days, you know, those peak, we call them peaks, peak days. On those really hot days, a lot of energy, a lot of electricity being used, and uh, that increase during these peak times just, it adds to the, to the wholesale power cost of electricity. So we kind of implemented this program. It's a voluntary way that the membership could help reduce wholesale power costs and all they have to do is kind of shift or reduce their usage out of these peak periods when people are typically using the most electricity all at once. So, like, if you think about it, you know, typical peaks during the summer um, are like a Monday through Friday, you know, 2 to 6 p.m., those afternoon hours when it gets really hot, able to shift their usage outside of that window so if they can, you know, kind of wait to do their laundry until, you know, after 6 p.m., so maybe at 7 p.m. or 8 p.m., or if they can uh, grill outside, 
instead of uh, use the oven during one of these peak periods, um, those little things that somebody's making in their lifestyle actually affects the electric bills for the entire membership. And uh, it's been a really, been a really neat program. Um, saved over a million dollars uh, in total in wholesale power costs over the last two years. And um, again, most of the members that are participating are are just doing minimal changes, uh, like bumping the that up a few degrees, or they're turning off any any unneeded lights. They're delaying using their hot water or dishes until after the peak. The clothes dryer, that's another one that's that uses a lot of electricity, and if you can kind of get that out of the peak period, then it reduces that wholesale power cost. And you know, all the member has to do is sign up to receive these notifications. So, like, we actually will monitor when we expect peaks to occur, and uh, we'll send out a text message or an email, or if you download the Blue Ridge app, uh, then we'll send an app notification. And when we think that we're going to be having a peak, then we send this this message out, just asking folks to reduce or shift their usage. You just got done listening to myself and Jason Lingle. Jason was talking about the many ways you can save money in the summertime, you know, with hotter weather and ways to keep your house cool and efficient all at the same time. And speaking of ways to save money, I know this has been a really difficult time for a lot of people. 2020 has just been the weirdest year and our thoughts and prayers continue to go out to the people who are affected by the virus and also affected by the effects of the virus, you know, with job losses, um, furloughs and, and, and things like that. I know a lot of people are being affected by those things. And I know that's putting a crunch and a lot of stress on you folks. So we've set up an in this together relief fund and you can go to our website, go to blueridgeenergy.com slash together to find out more information about that. Maybe you want to help or maybe you need help. Either way, information is there for you on how to get relief on your electric or propane and fuels bill. We're here for you throughout this crisis. You can always reach out to us. We are here to help. And again, our thoughts and prayers go out to everybody as we continue to navigate everything that's going on. Thank you for listening to another episode of Unplugged. And until next time, I'm your host. Jacob Puckett.